Oh, I nearly missed it then. Good morning to you. It's Saturday the... 18th of July 2015 and warm welcome along to this morning's United Kingdom Talk, our little weekly YouTube uh, hour-long chat show, boys and girls. Uh, we're also on Periscope at the moment. Those of you watching on Periscope should know that you cannot actually message me via Peri Periscope for this particular show, OK? Uh, the messaging is turned off at my end for this one, so I can't actually see your messages. But you can, of course, talk to each other while it's all going on. So that means how can you you talk to me that's what you're wondering for yourself how can you participate i can hear the excitement all oh by the way by the way good news boys and girls those of you that follow the periscope shows uh, will be very pleased to know i have at last found the other slipper this disappeared mysteriously here in the studios of united kingdom talk for four days we could not find the slipper and then as if by magic, it reappeared in the living room just by the city. How does that happen? Does some little fairy coming in here and change things around when I'm not looking? Why do they do it? Oh, that does annoy me. People that move things around, dear. They move things. You know where they are, especially when you live on your own like me. You know exactly where everything is. My friend Ron likes to do that. He likes to keep me on my toes. Only the other day, he moved, he borrowed the sunglasses from my car. Now, Ron has several pairs of sunglasses in the car. And we're not talking, you know, the free ones that you get from McDonald's or anything like that. You buy a Happy Meal and you get a free little plastic sunglasses. We're not talking about the 2 99 ones that you can buy from Sainsbury's. We're not even talking the 50 quid ones that you can buy from, uh, you know, a, 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 a reasonably, you know, well-off shop. Oh, no, 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 no. These are all like Armani and Ray-Ban and who's the other one now? Calvin Klein. They're, they're all sunglasses like that he's got. And he keeps about 10 pairs in the car. You think I'm joking? He keeps about 10 pairs of these in the car. So the other day, the other day, he decided, decided to, I can't remember, we were going maybe up shopping or something like that, or to the garden centre, one of our three weekly visits to the garden centre. We we're going So Am I a bit quiet today? Sorry, shall I whack myself up a little bit more? How's that? Is that better? I've just, just realised I'm, I'm not... Uh, there we are, that's a little bit better for you, is it? Sorry, gang, I didn't have myself turned up then. Um, uh, we were going one way out, three weekly shopping centres, uh, 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 tours to a garden centre or something like that, and he then announced he, he wanted to borrow the sunglasses. OK, so I didn't really think anything more of it. Anyway, so the day came and went. And then one or two days later, I'm driving somewhere and the sun was a bit bright and I reached no sunglasses. And I thought, where the hell have I put those sunglasses? I'm looking around the car, obviously not looking around the car. Not while I'm driving. Unlike certain people who do periscopes in the car and you are worrying all of us, dear. Please stop. I'm terrified you're going to have an accident. Don't be calling me to come and visit you in hospital. Well, I might do, you know, if you ask nicely, I might bring you a little bag of grapes or something like that. I mean, who wants to eat grapes in... Please don't bring people... Don't come and visit me with grapes in hospital. Don't do it. I'll have several large bars of Cadbury's Dairy Milk Chocolate, please. Or Galaxy. Don't be bringing grapes and bananas and apple. Can you just imagine it? You know, you're laying there in hospital. You, know, you don't feel very well. Do you want an apple? Come on, be honest. Do you want an apple? How about a banana? Do you fancy a banana while you're sitting there laying in hospital? Trying to recover? No? How about a lovely big brown bag full of grapes? No. I didn't think so. You want Cadbury's Dairy Milk Chocolate, don't you? You want chips. Is that what you want? <laughs> do you want one of those items? Yes, of course you do. Of course you do. 
So don't be bringing people bags of fruit in hospital. Don't give me all that crap about it's not, oh, it's not good for you. Are you telling me for those five days when you're in hospital, that apple, banana and bag of grapes are going to do you the world of good when in your entire life you've been eating chocolate and chips? Waste of time, dear. Give them the chocolate and chips in hospital. So please do not periscope while you are driving. You will have a terrible accident. It's only a matter of time. You do worry me, dear. You do worry me when you're doing that, boys and girls. Anyway, back on to um, uh, our little topics today. Let's say good morning to uh, Marge and good morning to Mike, who's with us this morning as well, who's already had chocolate. What? A At 10 past 12, Mike? God's sake, man. It's a bit early to be having chocolate at ten past, isn't it? Blimey, that is very, very early to be having chocolate. Dear, dear me. All right. Um, we've got a couple of things to talk about today, boys and girls. Are you ready? First of all, I would like to dedicate this uh, particular show to my dad, who would have been quite old today. I can't remember the exact age, but quite old today. Uh, I lost dad in 1996. Gerald Christopher Reardon was his name. So today's show is dedicated to my dad, hard-working Englishman. He used to leave the house. He worked for the Evening Standard for many years until they were taken over by the Daily Express. Then he worked for them for a few years, and then he got made redundant from there. And... Uh, he's, my dad was a real worker. Um, he got made re so he got made redundant. He, he, f he left the job on the Friday. On the Saturday morning, like at eight o'clock in the morning, he got up and went straight down Asda, looking for a job down there. My dad was never ever a shirker. I don't think he ever claimed any unemployment benefit or anything like that. Actually, I only ever claimed it for one 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 two week period when I just left school. Oh, I hated it. Walking down to... I thought it was really below me. I really did. Walking down to that unemployment benefit office and signing that bit. I thought, oh, I'm not having any more of this, dear. You know, there are, of course, some people who can't work, who are ill. You know, got all sorts of things wrong with them, or maybe one person, that one thing, that makes them not able to work. I have no problem with that, them having money and that. But those people are lazy bastards, and we know so many of them, dear. The same lazy bastards that are fixing their mate's car down the road or putting tiles on someone's roof as a favour. Oh, no, but too ill to work. I haven't got time for those people. Lazy bastards. They absolutely are. Um, uh, my dad wasn't one of those. And he went down to Asda um, looking for a job. He didn't get one down there, but he got one in some other place in Putney, which dealt with, I think it dealt with car rentals. Some, uh, Wendy's noticed it. I'm pleased, Wendy. I'll come to that in a minute. I'm so pleased. Someone has noticed it uh, straight away. Uh, you can't see this on Periscope, actually. Actually, you will be able to. Let me move that around there a little bit. And you'll be able to see it. You, won't, you can't see, I know, you can't see the number. The trouble is with Periscope, it's that way, and you can't, you can't get everything in. But I'll, I'll talk to you about it in a minute. Um... Yes, and this place did dealt with car rentals, and he was um, he got a job in the post room, and basically, I mean, I don't suppose I, I don't know if his job still exists now. Probably not because of emails and things like that. But his job was to receive all the post in the morning for the offices, and put them in the right pigeonholes and deliver them to various members of the office. I think all big organisations had one of these rooms at some point, and um, he was so good that they let three other people go. <laughs> but I don't think people were sacked. As they went, they weren't replaced. Younger people, it has to be said. You know, early 20s. Used to turn up late all the time and, and all that business. Um, so he did that. And then, uh, actually, he'd only been there a couple of years and then he had a stroke, uh, which he recovered from. Um... And he had to go to a very specialist hospital in Wimbledon. I can't, I can't remember the name of it now. Um, anyone know what the um, brain head hospital is in Wimbledon? I can't remember what it was called now. No, I can't remember. So he, he had a, a, a stroke and recovered from that, actually. While he was in hospital, um, they had to do a 
operation to remove a blood clot which was causing the stroke or had caused the stroke. And uh, that was a bit touch and go. They were saying, you know, we can do this, you know, It'll probably work, but it might not. And if it doesn't, you might not wake up. Anyway, decided to go ahead with it. He went ahead with it and it worked. I'd always remember uh, uh, one thing that sticks in his mind. When a nurse, I was visiting him. And uh, I didn't have a, a, a massive close relationship with my dad. Not like I did with my mum. I think that's a, just a mum-son thing, you know. You, you often hear a lot of times that the father and the son, they don't quite match up together, if you see what I mean. And that was the case with me and my dad. That's not to say that I didn't love him and appreciate everything he did, but in a room together, we'd, uh, and, and it was me. I just didn't want to talk. Mum would be, I'd be chat, chat, and then Dad would come along and he'd say something and I'd completely cut him dead. Example. Um, oh, I've just got the um, I've just got the insurance for my car. It's so and so, and my answer was, "Oh right." I don't know why. I honestly don't know why. Of course, once they've gone, when your parents have gone, my God, does that come round and smack you in the face time and time again? But as the man in church said the other day, you know, you can't live on your past. You can't beat yourself. And I've, I, I must admit, I've beaten myself up for many, many things I did um, in the past. It goes over and over in my mind. And I feel I should punish myself for it all the time. Um, but last week in church, well, I know it's hard to believe, but I do go on Sunday morning. Last week in church, the, the priest said, you know, um, that you cannot sit there. And punish yourself for stuff you've done in the past. Whatever it is, you've just got to move on. Especially if you can't do anything about it. Dad's dead. You know, I can't, can't very well dig him up now and say, look, Dad, I'm really sorry for all those bad things I did, can I? You know, it's just one of those things that the whole father-son thing. Um, my dad was fantastic. He was a fantastic man working all the time and he worked in a print and they used to use rolls of paper and for some reason I liked collecting these rolls of paper I didn't do anything with them and I had and this has carried on actually but I can't, I can't mention what uh, in what way I had stack and boxes cardboard boxes and rolls of paper and he would bring back a cardboard box but not stolen that what they would do is that the, the, the rolls of paper would be so big and as they got smaller and smaller and then they'd take them off before they got to the end so that's the bits that he bought home the bits that you take off before the end <laughs> you see and I used to just keep these in my bedroom I don't know why Rolls of the blooming things. And he would keep bringing them back. And I'd say, oh, you got any paper today, Dad? And he'd give me another box. And it'd be all that paper in there. You know, the money he spent over the years on me. Uh, school dinners, all the rest of it. That's absolute fortune. I had, uh, I know it's, uh, everyone says it. I had the best dad in the world. Absolutely. But for some reason, later on, I just didn't want to talk. Funny, isn't it? Funny, isn't it, how that happens? I don't know. He used to wear slippers as well. Maybe that's why I wear slippers. So today's my dad's birthday. Happy birthday, Dad. If you're watching up there, then uh, then please, I'm very pleased. Let's do some messages coming in already this morning. Uh, Wendy says, he, she's noticed. Oh, where's that message? There it is. The amaryllis is beautiful behind you, but I'd rather see Barry. I'm, Barry is taking a little bit of a break today. And this behind me. Those of you that just listen to the show because we've got people just download the podcast. This behind me is an amaryllis. Look at that. Have you ever seen anything? Those of you listening, it's a great big massive pink flower. It's a, it's a bit like a lily, but there are four of them. Can you see if I turn this round? Look at that. Can you see that? One. I'm not going to keep turning the whole. Look, there's four of these on there. Four of these. Not only is there four there, right? But in front there, I don't know if you can see. Can you see that one there? There's another four about to appear. I bought the bulb on Amazon. Eight pounds, I think it was, with, with the postage. 
and it's a great big thing and you plant it in and about two weeks later it starts poking its head up now after it's finished flowering i think you le let the leaves die down and then you dig up the bulb you put it so i've got in it comes with instructions everything you put it in a cool place for about eight weeks and then you plant it again and it comes up all over again isn't it the most beautiful it's like a triffid it's like a triffid beautiful and I'm afraid, I'm sorry, Wendy, this morning, just for one little old show where it's in front of Barry, because if I put it there, it's too tall to fit into the screen, and I don't think anyone can see it if I put it on there. Would you rather me hide the clock? Is that what you're saying? If, let me try it, let me try. I'm, because I feel guilty hiding Barry Manilow, who's on the calendar behind me. Right. Oh, yeah, for those of you who just listen, it's, a, it's, yeah, it's as I say, it's a quite a large thing. It's like a lily with four sides. It's actually four flowers. And there's another four coming up. And um, it's pink and white. And it's massive. I would say, let's have a look. I would say from end to end, th those flowers are about five inches big. Massive. Let's put it on. It's quite heavy. I'll have to stand up and do this. One minute. One minute. There we are. Is that better? Can you still see that? You can't see that now, can you? You see, that's a trouble. Those of you on Periscope, never mind. Oh, and that, oh, is the instru oh, everything, someone's got wet somewhere. Oh, no. It's got wet. Oh, I see what's happened. One minute. Oh, that's your fault, Wendy. Everything's got wet now, dear. Oh, well, just leave it like that. And the mirror ball's all over the place as well. We'll leave it like that for now. Is that okay now? <laughs> I've moved it. When now she says, oh, I'm only kidding. Too late now. I've moved it, dear. <laughs> Marge has a migraine this morning, so won't, won't be calling in. Um, uh, uh, okay, right, fine. Uh, Mike. Some new TV themes. Oh, Mike sent some TV themes. I can't take those at the moment, Mike, because we're using all the connection uh, for sending the show out, OK, my darling? Right, you can call in, boys and girls. Uh, the phone number is 020 144 3477. 020 144, sorry, 0208 144 There's also a Skype in. If you've got Skype... And you're anywhere in the world, you can call in as well. Can you see that all right there? The Skype in is, all one word, United Kingdom Talk. The Skype in, United Kingdom Talk. That, is that crooked? That's not crooked. Up. It looks crooked on one of the cameras for some reason. Okay, Skype in is United Kingdom Talk. I gather, if uh, you can watch on YouTube as well. Thank you, Wendy. If you want to watch on YouTube, go to youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. Once again, youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK is my YouTube address. There's also a uh, email. If you want to join me on by email, you can do that. Email address chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Now, what was your biggest surprise? Here's one uh, that you might want to join into this morning. What was or would you like to be your biggest surprise any idea on that one got a surprise do you remember it or what was it or what would you like it to be that's the question how about a trip to mars if i came along to you and says your surprise is a trip to mars would you like that there's a story in the daily mail this morning um there's the Mars One mission. Now, have you heard about this? OK, a load of people have applied to go to Mars. And I think it's a one way ticket. The whole thing is called Mars One. The whole, you know, trip thing is going to be called Mars One. Story says Mars One often ridiculed for their overly ambitious proposal to send humans to Mars has revealed how they plan to whittle their candidates down from 100 to 40. There's probably a few people out there that would like to see me go to Mars and would willingly buy me the ticket. 
The remaining 24 candidates, the firm says five days of interviews and group tests will be used and those left will be placed in isolation for nine days. Nine days, dear. Yes, it's a one-way ticket, Wendy. One-way ticket. The remaining 24 candidates will then be offered a contract to train, which the firm admits will take at least 10 years. And then you've got no, uh, no guarantee that it's going to happen. We will begin in training the 24 Mars, one candidate in teams of four, and we expect to have six teams. Remember, only one team of four members will go on the first mission. So we will be screening until near the end. Now, can you just imagine that? So, so you will be with just four people on a spaceship, which will take months to get to Mars. I think we, we, we um, don't realise sometimes the distances involved in going to these places. Take that recent thing on Pluto. I mean, wasn't that fabulous this week? When they started sending back high definitions of high definition photos of Pluto. I must admit, I looked at these photos and I thought to myself, well, they don't look that much different to the moon. We've got lots of high definition pictures of the moon. I mean, the closeness of the moon and, the, and Mars, you know, you could you could in 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 relative um, distances, we could walk to the moon in a couple of hours. But it would take you years to walk to Pluto. Years. You might not even make it. Wonderful, wonderful pictures of that Pluto thing. But it did, uh, uh, you know, I'm looking at this thing and what well, it just looks like the moon to me. How do we know it's not the same planet? Of course, you'll have all those people out there now, wouldn't you? Saying, oh, no, we didn't really take photographs of Pluto and all that business. I mean, how difficult can it be? We've got drones now. I could probably get a, a drone and attach my digital camera to it and with a small remote control send another one to Pluto if I wanted to. But would you go to Mars? What if you're in that spaceship and then something happens and you suddenly realise you don't get on with him or her anymore? But you're stuck in there for months with that same... Pe oh, I'd go mad, dear. I, I, I mean, I'm not good in um, with lots of people anyway, to be honest. Would you go to Mars in a little capsule? I mean, how do they go to the toilet anyway and eat? Awful. It says the project will first bring the final 100 together to self-select into six to 10 teams of 10 to 15 members. Teams must be as diverse as possible in regards to age, nationality and ethnicity. Ethnic ethnicity. Well, I don't think I'll be doing that then. I don't want to be stuck in someone there with my own age. We want young people in there, dear. Not someone my age. Go away. Bosses will unveil a series of group dynamic challenges and provide study materials related to the... Cha I mean, what can they do? I mean, what, what study related things? What would they have to do? Look at this. On a long voyage and in a permanent settlement, people in a small group can't hide or avoid each other. Oh, I couldn't do that. I like to close that front door and turn everything off when I'm annoyed or upset. You can't do that. You're stuck in the same room with them. Awful. This means they will have 24 hours a day to annoy each other. And what if you get someone who talks incessantly? Talk, 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 talk. Shut up. I'm only trying to talk. Shut up, shut up, shut up. No, it isn't the same as this show. If you want to, you can turn it off. Indeed, many people do, usually after 10 minutes. The ones left at the moment are the real hardcore, aren't you? <laughs> God, can you just imagine being in a room with one, someone you don't, you, you, who's getting on your nerves? You may, maybe you don't have to dislike them, you're just getting on your nerves. And you can't get out. 
bit like being at school with a teacher you don't like, isn't it? It goes on. This means simple things matter quite a bit. For example, whether you could be bothered by dirty socks on the floor, dirty dishes in the sink, or body odour. Oh, <coughs> you want to do the job I do? Karaoke DJing and quiz nights. When you have, when people keep coming up to you and talking, 99.9% .9 are fine. But occasionally someone opens their mouth. Oh, my God, the gases that come out of it are disgusting, dear. Disgusting. I'd rather eat one of my own socks than talk to half of these people, dear. They stink. Maybe in my DJ bag I should carry some, you know, antiperspirant deodorant or something like that would, would that maybe that would be a good idea and as they approach because you know and it's you know it's always the ones with the bad breath that keep coming back to you or they've just had a bag of cheese and onion crisps and then they want to come over and have a conversation go away dear i should just carry and as they approach put a curtain of spray in front of them but how do you explain that? We just say, Mike says, try spending 10 minutes with Cordelia. Jesus, that woman can talk. Oh, I couldn't be doing it, dear. I couldn't. Simon, did you try and call? I've got a missed call from you there. Wendy says, it would drive me round the bend. I like my own space. So do me, Wendy. So do I, Wendy. So do I. Um, Wendy says, you should carry your own mouth freshness spray. Spray it when they approach you. Well, in the air. Yeah, that's a good idea. You can spray it in the air, and as they breathe in to talk, they get a gasp of it in their throat, won't they? And maybe their disgusting breath won't smell anymore. Oh, it's awful. Halitosis, that's what it's called, isn't it? Halitosis. <laughs> oh, smelly, smelly breath, people. Actually, I find smelly breath is worse than body odour. Here, there used to be one, one boy... I said, oh boy, about 28, 30, there was this one bloke who used to come in one of the places, I don't work there anymore, one of the places that I used to work doing karaoke, and he stank. He stank. The B.O. was off. Oh, my God. He used to come in, and it was all right at first, but as the night got warmer, and this place was really busy, as it got warmer and warmer, the, uh, I'm not, this is no lie, Cross my heart and hope to die. No, not really. Did you think I died then? You don't think I'd die on this show and not advertise it first, do you? Can you just imagine the ratings then? I'd have almost as many people watching as Vlogger George. 300 people he had last Saturday. It's because he was filming someone in the bed with him. <laughs> I'd like to try that. Any volunteers? Hello? No? <laughs> surprise, surprise. That would be a surprise. To come back here and find, find someone really gorgeous in the bed. <laughs> the only gorgeous thing that gets in that bed is the cat. Don't feel sorry for me, will you? Eh? <laughs> Bad breath, dear. Anyway, so he would come in and he'd sing a couple of songs. And then... After a couple of hours, um, this, I'm not joking, the entire pub would stink of his body odour. It was awful. I mean, how can you tell someone, excuse me, can you go home and shower? You stink. How can you do it? You can't. can't you just have to put up with it. It's awful. Awful. We have a call. Hello, Sean. Hi, Chris. Oh, you're shouting there. Give us a, give us a count to five for me. One, two, three, four, five. Lovely. Thank you, Sean. How are you, darling? I'm doing good. It's been a long time. I know. Where are you calling in from? I'm from Stockfold. Stockwell? North of, north of London. Did you say Stockfold? Yeah, I'm in a pig farm. In a pig farm? <laughs> Could you do an impression of a pig now for us, please? I'm fine. Oh, no. I, that, was, that was a bit pathetic, that was. That sounded, that sounded like a piglet. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got any experiences of smelly people, Sean? Yeah. Now, don't name them, for God's sake. Don't name them, dear. We can't afford any um, any uh, any solicitors calling in or anything like that. Because, <laughs> of course, they're very, very important solicitors, aren't they? Oh, yeah, I'm a solicitor. Oh, you're so important. Go away, dear. 
Well, I've learned a, a few things, and actually, I found something actually at work the other day. Yeah. Do you like Tic Tacs? Tic Tacs? I haven't had those for ages. I used to like the orange ones. Because they have two new flavours at the moment. Oh, right, yeah. There's peach lemonade, which is okay. Ooh. But the one I really like is cherry cola. Cherry cola. I think I probably... It tastes like those kids, uh, the sweets that you have. You, it's like you cherry drops and then you hit the cola. Yes, I think I'd probably be happier with the peach lemonade. They sound really nice. I'm going to have to go back. How many calories in each Tic Tac? I don't know. <laughs> Is it like five calories per Tic Tac? <laughs> well, likely. have you got a box there, please? I haven't. I, I'm there at work and I'm at home. Oh. Have you, are you on a mobile phone? Yeah. Could you pop down to the shop? I can do. And see how many calories there are in a Tic Tac. I can find that as well. Yeah, particularly the peach and lemonade ones, because that's the one I want to try. Peach and lemonade Tic Tac, now that yeah. you've mentioned it. Maybe you could get a little box and appear somewhere um, at one of my venues as like a gift. That could be my surprise, because we're talking about surprises at the moment. Yeah. And also with, um, also with a, another topic that you just talked about on the Mars. Yes. That would be so annoying being with four people for your rest of your life. Oh, can you? Do, I just couldn't do it. I don't think I could do it. Because when you think it's one way, so you're actually going to die on Mars. Yeah, is that a bad thing? Do you think? I don't know. I mean, the thing is, in this world now, we're running out of places to bury people. Just think, you could have a whole planet to decide where you want to go. And also, there's an ast- um, I think it's an asteroid coming past us, thirty times closer than any planet. Where? Well, yeah. Just Sunday. a minute. Let me have a look. I can't Time see to go anything past here. 10 PM. I can't see anything here. Is it coming it now? Ask... Sean? Yeah? I can't see anything. At 10pm, there should be an asteroid coming Oh, faster. later on. Well, why didn't you say that? You had, me wor- you had me worried for a minute. Then I had to look out the window, dear. <laughs> I mean, there's yeah, a very dodgy-looking cloud at the moment going past. You don't think that's it, do you? Nah. Apparently, it's worth three... Trillion pounds, uh, three trillion pounds, yeah. What do you mean it's worth three trillion pounds? It has. Um, they're trying to think of ways to mine it because apparently it has a hundred million tons of platinum. Oh yes, and we need that for our little devices, don't we? Isn't mm. that isn't that isn't platinum used in mobile phones and electronic devices and things like that? Yeah. Oh. Or do you want it for... Ju- are you one of those jewellery people? Do you wear stupid bits of metal on your fingers and round your neck that actually don't do anything? No. Well, pr- please someone tell me, what is jewellery for? My mate buys a load of jewellery. Ron. Oh, he loves it. Rings and blooming bracelets and earrings. And- but they don't do anything. They're just bits of metal that shine. What is the purpose of these things, dear? It's a damn waste of money. And also, there's another thing that I'm on surprising people. One of the things that I'd like to do also is... This is, this is a surprise that you want to do on someone, is it? Yeah. Go on. No, they don't watch the show, but um, she's just been diagnosed with um, terminal pancreatic cancer. All right. And she's a big fan of the Yankees in America. Is this your mum? Uh, my auntie. Your auntie, OK. And she think she really... Instead of starting chemo, she wants to try and sort out a passport and go over to the Yankees so mm. that she can actually watch the match for herself for the first time. All right. Is this, this is your auntie, is it? Yeah, my mum's just started chemo. Your mum? cancer. Yeah. And so you've got... Both... So they both... Are they, are they sisters, are they? Uh, yeah. What, same what, age? Ca- um, that's, uh, about seven years difference. Both at the same time, eh? Oh, I'm sorry, Sean. I know. But well, are, it, are, are, okay. are both of them... I'm so sorry, I've got a really itchy nose again. I always get an itchy nose in here. Um, I'm scratching I'm not actually picking it. I'm trying... I'm scratch, It feels like there's a spot inside it. Do you know what I mean, Sean? Oh, yeah, I know hurt, what I mean. If I push it, it hurts, dear. It hurts. I think something's climbed up there, Sean. Tell me a bit I more about... That. Tell me a bit more about your mum and auntie. So, um, my auntie was diagnosed four days after my mum had found out. Right. And now my mum's obviously struggling because she doesn't like... Um, she was quite scared at first. But she seems to be coping each day. Um, and two days ago, she started her first chemo. Um, can, can, which, oh, 
Will will the key will the chemo maybe fix them? What's happening for my mum because um, obviously on her boob it's quite swollen. Isn't it? She has and breast she cancer, does she? Yeah. Okay. So she's joking, saying obviously she's having a, a boob job. Mm. Um, but what they said because they can't they want to do surgery but they can't stretch the skin as far as it is at the moment. So they're trying to do so, um, chemo first and then about sixteen months' time we hopefully should be able to do the surgery. Right. Would they take a bit of skin maybe somewhere else? Sometimes they take it off the bum or the leg, don't they, to, to cover it's over? or More likely. Right, but we, don't, okay. we still don't know half the details. Yeah, OK. Uh, my aunt, I've had a couple of aunts with that, and they had one removed. And they, they recovered from that. Yeah, they recovered mm. from that, all right. So, um, you know, fingers crossed the same might happen to your mum, eh? Yeah, we, we, we know that my mum's probably OK. It's just the auntie that we know that. We've probably got less than half a year with her now. All oh, right. So do they still put your aunt on chemo? I believe so. Do you know why? What, what, if, 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 it's, if it's, like, not going to work, why, would, why, why do they do that, I wonder? Try, um, probably to prolong you as much as possible so okay, you can so enjoy it's it's like... A bit more life. OK, fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. And also, it normally helps with pain as well, apparently. Does it? Right, OK. I don't, I don't know, you know. I mean, we, we all seem to know lots of people who have been on chemo at some point, don't we? Yeah. And your mum is quite upbeat about it all, is she? Oh, as much as she can be. She's That's quite, the way Sometimes to she struggles, and then uh, like the first day she was at chemo, I was at work. You've got to keep her upbeat, uh, Sean. I know that you yeah, make I music. Think. I know that you make music videos and that sort of thing, don't you? Right, yeah, we'll, no, I was we'll, thinking about, and I was we'll, doing, I was going to do another one, but I can't do it because I'm like, oh god, it's really sad. It's what, darling? It was a really sad one because I was, I was either going to do heaven or take me to the clouds above. Oh my like, oh, god, no! Don't it. do that to her, dear. For God's know, sake, that, man, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I was just, it's more like the songs, and I thought, no, I can't use those songs. <laughs> <laughs> It's a bit like someone playing out Burn Baby Burn at someone's cremation, isn't it? No, don't do anything like that. No, I was going to say, you know, if you, you want to keep your mum happy and upbeat, for Christ's sake, don't show her one of your music videos, dear. They always depress me. <laughs> <laughs> don't, I got uh, to the other day, because she don't like being filmed, but I got, um, every time we see a pigeon, it is called Gary. A pigeon? Yeah. And have you got I something? Got mom, are you have you got something on pigeons then, or or what's all that about? Uh, my mum likes pigeons. And now, it's, a, a, it's like a family joke, and they always call it Gary. Well, oh my god, day. that is the weirdest thing, Sean. My nephew Gary has a thing about pigeons. I'm I'm not joking. I'm absolutely serious. Uh, I was at my niece's, my great niece's christening, Olivia is her name, uh, last Sunday. And at every event, I don't know why they do it, at every event they have these white pigeons. Some people say they're doves. I say they're budgery guards. They look like large budgery guards to me that happen to be white. But they have these doves, like pigeons, you know, and they come in a little cage and then they, they say something and then they hold it and then let it fly off. <laughs> I don't understand. So my, yes, indeed, my... um. Uh, my, my my nephew Gary also has a thing about pigeons. You must tell your mum that, darling. Yeah, because I got uh, my mum to make sounds of pigeon noises. So oh, she's going, coo -coo, coo -coo. Can you do those? Can you do those? <laughs> Can you do pigeon noises? Coo -coo, coo -coo. No, it's the best one like not them. doing it for me, Sean. No, <laughs> no, it's more like a, it's like this. <laughs> <laughs> They're like almost like a like a like a high pitched cat purr, <laughs> like that, Sean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, when we went and visited my auntie in the Royal Free in London, oh my gosh, she made me laugh so much because um, we saw these pigeons and my and my auntie was like, oh, let's film them. Well, these pigeons weren't just doing anything; they were actually having eight second second sex. They were having what? Uh, sex, and it only lasted eight seconds. Eight seconds? Yeah, for a pigeon. I'm glad I'm not a bloody pigeon, dear. <laughs> <laughs> what a strange developed person you are to want to film pigeons doing that. Couldn't you have filmed them pecking up bread or, so, or looking for worms or something like that? 
No, you had to film them doing that. How awful, dear. Awful. You want to see cats at it, dear. Oh, it's awful. Fair everywhere. It's flying all over the place, dear. <laughs> Dreadful. <laughs> well, Sean, um, you need to keep your mum's spirits up. That's your job. Have you got brothers or sisters? I uh, no. Like you want... me. Hey, there's only you, is there? Well, it's down yeah. to you then. You... Is your dad still around or what? Yeah. OK, well, it's down to the two of you then, isn't it? Got to keep your mum's spirits. Always look happy in front of her, my darling. If she's really ill, yeah. don't start crying or anything like that. You've got to be strong, my darling. Keep happy, and then that will make her happier. Yeah, that's what right. I do. And fingers crossed. So you're surprised you'd like us for your mum to get suddenly better, isn't it? Yeah. And I, su I surprised my mother-in-law the other day because I went and got 50 shades of grey that I'm seeing edit. <laughs> Oh, my God. So now you're giving her, light like, porn to make herself feel better. And Is that the wisest thing? I mean, couldn't you bought a nice book? Now, who's that one that they used to write the romantic novels? And she always wore pink. What was her name? And she had a pink oh, poodles. Oh, God. So when do you know that? When do you, could you come back to me with that one? Um, oh, by the way, Wendy has just looked this up for us. Very, very important information, Sean. Are you listening? Yep. Each calorie is approximately two calories. Sorry, each Tic Tac is approximately two calories. Oh, dear. So there you are. Go and have two or three boxes a day, dear, instead of the crisps. <laughs> I was very bad on the way home last night, Sean. Oh, I don't dare tell you. Two bags of cheese and onion crisps, right? Because I got extended. Where I was working last night, I was supposed to finish at 12, but we carried on till 2. So I got extended. Well, that's taken me out of my um my my full up mode, if you see what I mean, from the dinner earlier. So mm. I so I had two bags, two two bags of crisps, cheese, uh, no salt and vinegar because I didn't have cheese and onion. Two bags of um. Uh, thank you, Wendy. Barbara Cartland is the lady in pink. She used to write romantic novels. None of that Fifty Shades of Grey, dear. Soft porn. God, I'm, I'm thinking, get. I'm, I'm thinking that makes me laugh. It's unseen edit is rough. It's only an alternative ending, so it's a load of Please rubbish. stop it. My DVD player would refuse to play such a thing. It would have refused to play such evilness on my television set, dear. Anyway, um, yes, two bags of crisps in the pub. And then on the way home, I thought, I'd just have a small bar of chocolate. Went in the BP garage, picked up one bar. And what did the sign say above it? Two for one. Well, two for one pound fifty. I think it was like one pound twenty for one, or two for one fifty. I mean, you'd be a fool not to suffer. Well, I'll have the other bar tomorrow night. So I had one bar, and then guess what happened? <laughs> I had the other bar as well. That is correct, Sean. Yeah. So stop buying your mum such awful things, dear, and get her some bloody chocolate. <laughs> Mind you. Knowing you, dear, it wouldn't make it to the house, would it, dear? You'd have it in the bag and then you get to the... Oh, it's gone. Where's that gone? In your tummy, dear. <laughs> in your tummy. That would be a nice surprise for your mum to get suddenly better. So that's that. Yeah, that's a nice one. That's a nice one, mm. Sean. Thank you very much, sir. OK. Lovely to I'll talk to you. you. OK, Sean. <laughs> Bye-bye, my darling. Bye-bye. There we are. Young Sean there, you know. Oh, let's say a few prayers for his mum and aunt at the same time as well. Isn't that awful? Just awful. So we've done the Mars thing there. Uh, Barbara Cartland, yes, indeed. That was a lady in pink that used to make the romantic no novels. Um, thank you, Mike, for your little message there. Well, did Simon, did you try and call in earlier? I've got a missed call from you. I don't know if you want to call back now. Uh, surprises. My surprise, what I'd like as a surprise is... Um, I'd like a call from the BBC. Oh, Hello. Yes, it's... What's his name? Alan Yentob? Oh, sorry. Um, we'd like you to come in for an interview at the BBC. I'd quite like that. that. That's a surprise that I would like. What about you? Is there a surprise that you'd like to happen? Or maybe a surprise that's happened in your life? How about calling me and telling me all about it, just like Sean did? 020 8 one double four three four double seven. O two oh eight one double four three four double seven is the local London phone in number. Or you can Skype in. 
The Skype in is all one word, United Kingdom Talk. If you're watching Periscope, I can't see your messages uh, on this particular show. You need to call in or Skype in. Skype username, United Kingdom Talk. Phone number, 0208 3477. It's a local London number. What surprise would you like? I was going to say one of the nicest surprises as a child, I think, I had was... Um, getting an electric train set for Christmas. But it wasn't really a surprise because I'd asked for it. Even though, I think, as a child, in those days, you would ask for a Christmas present. But you wouldn't necessarily know whether you were going to get that or not. You know? Will I get that? Or... And indeed, sometimes you didn't. People weren't rich. And, whereas now, oh, yeah, mum, I want a PlayStation 4. And they know 100% that, that, that that's what they're going to get in the morning. So there was an element of surprise at Christmas and birthdays, I think. And I actually think it was better. Maybe that's because I'm looking at the past with rose-tinted glasses, do you think? I think it was better to have surprises at birthday and Christmas rather than say, I want that, I want this. You know, you hear some people now, oh, I'll give you a list of the things that I want. That's just, is that Christmas now? Is that birthdays now? A list of the things that I want. I don't know. I think it's nice to have a surprise for something to just turn up. In fact, I like to surprise myself, boys and girls. What I do is I go on Amazon one-click ordering and then I order something and then I completely wipe my mind of the fact that I've ordered something. And then a few days later, or sometimes even the next day, a box arrives. Oh, I wonder what could be in that box. In fact, that does actually happen. I order things and then it arrives to... Do and I think, what's that box? And I don't remember what I've ordered. That's what happened to this bulb. This little box, I, thought, I wonder what that is. And to add to the excitement, you put it to the side in, in, in view of you, maybe next to the telly or something, and leave it for a couple of hours, wondering what could be in that exciting little box. In this case, an amaryllis bulb. Do you do that? So that surprises. Well, that was a bloody waste of time. Only one call in about that. I'll cross that one out. <laughs> Here's another thing. A little story I saw in the day... It's just a waste of time, isn't it, really, sometimes? It's, it's a story. Oh, you just, you're happy to listen, aren't you? That's what it is. Are you just happy to listen? Your weekly big shop. Do you still do a shop? You know, you do your main food shopping, where once a week you go into Sainsbury's, Tesco's, Audi, Asda, Waitrose, 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 Waitrose. Do you, get... <laughs> do you do one big shop? Or have you stopped doing that? Article in this morning's Daily Mail. More than half of British people have given up the big weekly shop and are making more frequent visits to local stores in a move towards the way we shopped 50 years ago. Funny, isn't it? It shows that less than half the people now visit out-of-town supermarkets every week, with more than a third taking a grazing approach to shopping. Now, I don't know about you. Um, again, when I was a little boy, we used to do a weekly shop on a Saturday at Sainsbury's in Kingston. As a little boy, I got quite, I was always quite excited, you know, pushing the trolley around. I would, they'd let me push the trolley. As I got older, I didn't want to go shopping anymore, Sainsbury's or, or wherever. I, I just didn't want, didn't want to do it. Um, when I started living on my own in 1987, I got my own flat. I, I think I did a, I think I did do a weekly shop. But as time's gone on, I like to pop in. Now and again, I, I, I don't plan to do, say, a weekly shop on a Thursday afternoon at two o'clock. If I do do a big shop, then it'll be on, you know, oh, I think I'll go to Waitrose today. 
I don't plan to go there at the same time every week. Do you still do that? Generally, when I go swimming and I walk past an uh, Audi, and I might pop in there a couple of times a week, two or three times a week, you know, just get maybe a few apples, a bit of cheese, a couple of things of soya milk, a bit of ice cream, and then now and again, oh, I need a big shop today, and I'll go to Waitrose for that. Big trolley walking around, you know, 50 quid later. 50, 60, 70 quid later, maybe. Free carrier bags in Waitrose, incidentally, boys and girls. 5p in Audi, which is quite a lot. Got a call coming in from Simon. Hello, Simon. Uh, hello, Chris. How are you? Hello. Is that two calls from you this week? It is, yes. I'm getting overexposed, aren't I? Yeah, you don't want to expose yourself too much. You get arrested for that. Oh, yeah, I know. That's no, what I happened to Vlogger George last week. No, he didn't get arrested. He got banned yeah, I, from I Periscope. I must admit, I've watched Vlogger George. I must admit, I think I'm getting a bit, um, how can I put it? Worried? Um, no, he's a bit sort of, um, I don't know. I was going to say perhaps he appeals to a younger audience, but then he appeals to you, doesn't he? No, I, no, I, I actually think you're probably why. I'm a, I'm a bit, um, I never really grew up, Simon. <laughs> I, was, I have I was, to say that Callum, and very, very surprisingly, should I think he's hilarious? Cal, hey? but, then, but Callum's of that age where he's into um, sort Cal- of practical jokes and what have you as well. Callum, you'll, you'll how old is Callum, Chris? But I'm quite an introvert, really. You know. How old is Callum? He's fifteen. Yeah, yeah. I'm not surprised he'd like it, and he will look up to him. Be worried because he'll look up to George. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can never be mixing with adults or anything like that. They bore me. I'm sorry. It's like when I visited me, um, my sister's uh, uh, lot last week, uh, my niece and nephews and their children. You know, I walked into the house. I think I practically ignored all the adults at the table and went straight over to the kids and started. So they, they're in like a travel cot. And there were oh, three right. of them in there. So I just grabbed the side of it and shook it violently. They love that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good for you. I hope people grow up far too quickly. Oh, they do, Simon. So what are you bringing in for? What what you were talking about, talking about um, sort of surprises and what have you. I I think I'm a bit like you, really. I'm I'm ready ready for the call from Radio 2. I'll take it any time, even in the middle of the night. I wouldn't mind. (laughs) Have you sent them your number? (laughs) <laughs> well, 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 I was hoping my reputation was going to precede me, really. But oh, yeah, so I think you've got the same problem as me. You think someone's going to hear you and you don't do anything about it. Would I be right? Yeah, I think so. It's, uh, it's, uh, it, it makes me laugh, though, really, because going on with what we were saying about uh, V-Blogger, it, it, it's strange, really, because I don't know how much but he says as if I'm sort of famous, which I'm never likely to be. Don't know how many people you've sort of met in radio, even in the sort of lower strands of local radio. But a lot of people that I know in radio are seriously, oh, they're quite introverted, shy people. It's quite strange. I don't know if you've oh, yes. That. Yes. There's a particular talk show host who's very outspoken. Um, uh, uh, but uh, according to people who know him, out on the street, he's a very, very nervous person. Very nervous. Mm. I think the thing is with radio, especially, I mean, I'll do a lot of my radio with the kids. I do do some radio on my own. But the thing is, um, we're we're lucky enough, the station that I'm on, that we do have um, quite a reasonable studio now. So you go in there and, um, you know, if there's been no one on before, you turn the burger alarm off and you open the doors and there's all the sort of um, studio windows and double glazing and what have you. And it's all very sort of professional. But it's a really odd... Well, I say profession, I don't get paid for it, but it's a very odd thing to do because you sit in that studio with all that equipment and all your knobs and faders as you do have. And, um, I mean, really, you could be sort of like talking to no, no one. I, I get a bit of a feedback, but my show's totally different to yours. It's not so much of a talk show. It's more sort of music-based. Yes. So um, it's just a strange thing that you... you yeah, so if you, to... if, you run, if you run out of things to do, you just put a record on. <laughs> well, well, yeah, but I mean, it's, it's a strange thing that you have to be... It, it, People say to me, we have people at our radio station do it for the first time, and they say, oh, what it's like. I said, the only thing I can describe it is it's a bit like having a one-way telephone conversation. Yes. Do you know what? It's, di- yes. it's different for you because you do a different sort of show, but you know what I mean? Yeah, well, well, well I remember the first talk show I did. It's, it's 10 years ago this year, and it was on a little station called CMP Radio, and I'd been doing, I'd been doing a music and chat show on this little internet station. 
but I noticed the chat was becoming longer and there was less music being played. And I'd been listening to um, Mike Dickin on LB on Talk Radio, I think it was on then. Uh, great presenter. He died a, a few years ago in a car crash. <clears throat> and I thought, I wonder how difficult it is to do a talk station, uh, to do a talk show. So one one day on this little internet station, I decided to book myself an hour time slot directly after the music and chat show. So I did a music and chat show, then they played out the news and on I came again. And I I, I was on CDs at the time. Good so end. I didn't have any... I turned off the CD player, put all the CDs in the corner, switched on and just started talking. I was, I was so nervous, yeah. so nervous. But I did it and I thought, yeah, I quite like doing this. And here we are 10 years later. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the thing Wendy made us. She made us this crystal thing. I did, yeah. Right, and it yeah. says 10 years anniversary at the bottom there. Mm. The only reason it's not up yet is because we're not quite at 10 years, so I'm waiting for, like, October, and it'll go up on the back wall there, hopefully on a little shelf where it will be turning around. And I'm trying to make some videos with it as well. I haven't been very successful yet, but I've got another idea that I'll try on, on, on another night off. Um, so that's how I started the talking. Yeah. Did, 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 to be asked on a slightly different. So what was you, you said when you left school that you very, very briefly were on the dot. What was your very first paid job? Oh, uh, yes, uh, Millet's uh, camping shop. I had a Saturday. Oh, right. I, I took a Saturday <laughs> job in Millet's the camping shop. I'm not laughing, honest. <laughs> twelve pounds. I got twelve pounds for Saturday. Uh, ten a uh, ten a.m. to six p.m. Yeah, oh, right. And there the very go. first job he gave me to do was to watch the win- wash the windows outside the front. This was on Putney High Street. Wash the windows at the front of the shop in Putney High Street. And um, and he, after 10 minutes, he came out. He said, you all right out here? He was a lovely chap. What was his name? Can't remember. He wasn't there for long. I think he got sacked. <laughs> he was very, very down to earth. All right out? Are you all right out here, mate? Go on, don't complain. You can watch all the birds going past as you're here. I didn't have the art to tell him. No, actually, I was. I think I was straight then, or I thought I was straight, so I was 16, you know. All right. So, yeah, yeah, so that that was my first ever job. What was yours? Uh, mine was a, a vast succession of, of what we call down here, when we live on the south coast by the sea. Uh, Do you know, you the volume of that bloody phone you're on goes up and down like anything. Does it? Yeah, it okay. does. I don't know why. Carry on. Oh, right. Um, a succession of what we call down here sort of seasonal jobs, you know. Um, uh, I had a few where I was at school working in cafes and what have you. And I, when I left school, um, things haven't really changed a lot on the island. Work, a lovely place to bring up your kids, very low crime and what have you, but not a lot in the way of work. Right, and, yeah. And um, I just worked in sort of cafes and sort of hotels seasonally until I, until I was 21 and I took me... Big HGV license, and I've done that ever since. You so, drive uh, those great big things. Would you like to drive a bus or a coach, Simon? I, I always liked the idea of being able to do that. Um, do you know? It's, it's, it's funny oh, enough. Tomorrow, I'm going, I'm have going you got another up. phone? What phone are you on? Like, is it a house phone or a mobile? Uh, hang on, let's see if I can. One minute you're uh, like, you know, is I'm, that any better? Yeah, that's much better. One minute you you, you oh. hit the Lidl at one, and then you suddenly go up to six. Yeah, I was on speakerphone. That's what it is. I oh well, have, are you, that, have you been? Have you been doing? Now you work on a bloody radio station. Do you ever get people calling on speakerphones? Uh, yes. I'm, and what I'm do you say to them? And what do you say to them? I'll say, can you find another phone or take <laughs> it off speaker? And you're calling me sorry, on a speakerphone. No, you naughty man. Anyway, I'll carry cons- on. I'm cons- consider myself told. I'm sorry. I feel very <laughs> humble. <now. laughs> you're not getting angry, are you, Simon? <laughs> Let me, I'm the most chilled out person I know, but then having said that, I don't know many people, so it's not... I forgot what I was saying, I've totally lost my thread. Oh, that's right, I'm doing tomorrow. You talk about buses, I'm actually going to sunny Alton tomorrow, which is sort of um, halfway, really, between me and London, to a, right. a big bus rally, because I've got this one of my rather sad hobbies. That I'm that's into. not a sad um, hobby, I think that's fantastic, mate. Yeah, into sort of vintage transport, so it's predominantly... The sort of bus rally for old buses, but they have their trucks there and everything. And um, I'm taking the daughter and the son as well. So, okay. but, yeah, quite a family day. Poor old other got to work, bless her, where she works. Oh, in you'll the have a great yeah, that'd be a, that'd be a great but, day. I have to tell you 
Now you've picked up the phone. That's even worse than when it was on a speaker. You need a new phone. How old is that phone you've got? Is it a bit of tone or something like that? Is it? I bet it's a really cheap one, is it? What? Well, no, no, actually, funny enough, a cheap phone, how dare you? I'll have you know that this is an Apple iPhone. <laughs> well, it don't work very well. Well, well the tr trouble is when I phone you up sort of um, via mobile that's away from the computer is that I have to phone you, which I'm obviously not at the moment, via your phone number, and the mobile phone signal, I never invent that, I've told you before, and it's very hilly and what have you, so I have yeah. a lot of um, trouble with the phone signal. Or like I am now via Skype, and the trouble is with Skype, I'm quite old, far away from the router. So that's probably what it is. Well, just, well, it's not going. The quality's that bad. It, um, it is know, really, it is really, ago. it is really bad. It's funny, you know. The other day when you called in, I had exactly the same problem. You, 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 your sound level goes up and down. I then spent an hour checking all my connections. Now I just took a call from <laughs> Sean this morning, which was perfect, and now you're back. It's going wrong. So I know it's your phone. You've wasted an hour of my life. I'm very angry. See, and you told me you never got angry. You I never ever liar. get angry. <laughs> liar, liar, pants on fire. Liar, liar, pants are on fire. <laughs> no, but just before I go, because I don't, want you to, I don't want you to spend another hour checking your quick. You, you said a few weeks ago, did anyone read while they're on the toilet? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm on the toilet at the moment. Oh, you. go I'm away, probably, will you? Too much in for much. Oh dear. But uh, nice to hear but from I thought, you, Simon. I just want to tell you what's on the side of my uh, toilet. Can you hear? That's a copy of the Enterprise. Do you want to know what the Enterprise is? No, go <laughs> you on. You might not want to. What is it? It's the, um, it's the, um, what's it they call it? Something called quarterly. That's right. It's a quarterly public. Hello? Of the Isle of Wight Bust and Coach Museum. We're almost. So that's what I read when I'm on the toilet. <laughs> I can't hear you anymore. You're just break, you're just breaking up now. I, I think I'll, I'll let you go, Simon. No, I think I'll better go, Chris. Can't I'll hear you at right, all, mate. mate. Bye bye now. Bye. Oh well, we got some of the conversation there, didn't we? But um, that's the worst phone ever that's called into this program. It really is, dear. Um, Mike says, I remember when I received my first keyboard for Christmas in the early 90s and my first game console was a Sega Mega Drive. We do our food shopping in Tesco every two weeks. So you still do the big shop, don't you, Mike? Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Wendy's laughing. At <laughs> Wendy pops to the shop uh, when I need something every other day. That's what I do, Wendy. I pop to the shop every other day now, really, and just get a couple of bits, you know. Um, also, uh, she'd like, as a surprise, Barry Manilow to do a private show in her living room. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Eh? Very nice indeed. Right, we're just about done today. Let me just check I've got any emails. I don't think I've got any emails this morning. I've got, oh, I've got a new voice message. Oh, Simon left a voice message, so we just spoke to him as well. Yes, we'll leave it there today. Boys and girls, I do do um, sort of daily shows, sometimes two or three a day, on an app called Periscope. Okay, it's available for the iPhone and Android. Simply download Periscope and look for me, username United Kingdom Talk. OK, if you type in United Kingdom Talk in the search on Periscope, you'll find me there. Whenever I do a show, your phone will go, switch on, and there we are live, OK? So you can join me on that. If you ever want to send an email into the show as well, my email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. And my main website, you can find unitedkingdomtalk.co. Dot UK, United Kingdom Talk dot co dot UK. Thank you very much for joining us uh, on this Saturday morning. I'll see you again soon. All right, bye bye now.